Hey, hello and welcome back to part three of my series of videos on these, the D-Brand Dark Plate 2.0 case covers for the PS5. Now, in my previous videos, we have looked at a couple of key things. First off, we looked at this system utilizing either the official plates or using the D-Brand plates that are knock around for about 50 or $60. There's a few little optional extras there. And our questions ultimately came down to two factors. There was originally three, but it really came down to two factors. One, did introducing these fans on either side of this system interfere with the negative pressure airflow system of the console where air is drawn in via the front and then circulated in the fan and then pushed out the back? The original plates and Sony themselves maintained they needed this closed system to pull that air in as efficiently as possible and push it out afterwards as quickly as possible to introduce fresh air. And the D-Brand plates had the circular panels here on the side, which they said was enough to change the design, but also to introduce more airflow. And there's the argument that the minute you introduce more airflow ways, in other words, ways for air to enter the system, the result is that the, um, the pressure system here has now got a, a leak of air escaping there. We were looking at, in my previous videos, did this affect the ambient temperature inside negatively or positively? But the second factor was the SSD upgrade, because we're gonna reach a point very, very soon where either everyone's gonna have to have an SSD upgrade or having a PS5 is gonna have an element of game compromise where you can only have a handful of AAA titles on your system at any given time and rely on them being on the PlayStation Store for you to download Definitely not forever, because one day they turn those off. One day, licenses end. One day, games get pulled. No one really wants to make sure that all these things they paid actual money for exist only there. They want them on their system, hence the upgrade. So the second thing we looked at was, did the system with these plates on affect the temperature of the SSD inside on that controller that's located inside the system? Now, in our second video, we repeated all of those tests, but with one minor difference. That minor difference being the M2 cover slot. We took advantage of a Seagate Fire Cuda um, 530 SSD, and the Seagate Fire Cuda SSD inside there was located here, under this plate. Now that plate, PlayStation say, is to keep the SSD inside there, and it won't negatively impact the temperature. Now we've done multiple tests in the past where we've looked at the PS5 taking advantage of with a heat sink inside with and without that cover plate. And in every single test I've ever conducted, I've found that the SSD has done a better job and remained cooler overall without that cover on there. You need to have a heat sink, please get a heat sink. I've said this enough times now, but we found that having that cover on there has actually been negative on the impact of the SSD. Now, let's look at the big picture. Yes, having that cover on there may make the SSD a little hot, but perhaps the reason that cover is on there is so that the giant heat being generated from it is not going to impact the overall system. All that air pushing through, going over a hot heat sink, introduced into the system, circling around, may be detrimental to the system and make the system have to work harder because the air being introduced is that tiny bit warmer. So in today's video, in the third part of this series, we're going to be focusing a lot more on that SSD there. Now we're gonna keep using the Seagate Fire Cuda. This is the Fire Cuda 530 with the EK heatsink on board. And we're going to be looking at this system with its cover on using the official plates. And we're gonna be comparing it against utilizing this system with a Seagate Fire Cuda 530. But this time that 530 is gonna use the Sabrent. Now, I've already done testing with and without the plate uh, on top of this SSD, with and without these. The reason we're comparing the setup of the Sabrent with D-Brand plates versus um, the non-Sabrent um, M2 cover with original plates is because a number of you are looking at upgrading your system who want to go all in. So rather than repeat myself and go through the videos and show you guys the same footage over and over and over and over and over again, I'm going to go ahead and just skip to the end there and go for a default SSD upgrade setup to what is arguably the biggest setup of all. The tests that are gonna be conducted, as I say, the left-hand side of the screen is going to show the Fire Cuda with the heatsink on board inside this slot with the M2 cover, but 
in the case of when we're running this test with the Sabrent, we're not going to be using the heatsink version. We're going to be using the non-heatsink version of the Fire Cuda. So again, that's the Fire Cuda SSD that's going to be utilizing the Sabrent heatsink there. So it's the bare 1TB model. I'm going to install it inside there so you can see what we're doing. Again, all of the tests that we're looking at have already been recorded. I've not had a chance to edit them down. They were all recorded on the, I want to say, 12th, Saturday, the 12th of February, two days before Valentine's Day. Aren't I a romantic devil? Um, all conducted in one day, so all of the tests should have that in mind. There was a 15-minute pause between tests where the system was powered down and the side plates were removed in all instances to give 15 minutes of the system to take a little bit of time to cool down. Consequently, you'll probably notice that as the test regimen goes along, the base level uh, introduction temperature is a pinch higher each time. That's why throughout our testing, we do not look at, we don't primarily look at the starting temperature and the end temperature. The only reason we discuss them at all is to talk about the difference between these two numbers. We want to know how much the temperature has raised, how much heat has been generated on the inside of this system and on that SSD there. Now, that SSD, as mentioned, is going to live in there and it's going to utilize the Sabrent PS5 designed heat sink. It's already got a thermal pad already on there. So again, we can just go straight ahead, install it on there, grab the big screw, put that on there, grab our screwdriver and bingo bongo, we're almost ready to go. So there we go. There you go. So that is the setup there with the Sabrent heatsink in there. So again, the argument here is going to be that when air is being drawn in by that negative pressure system, that not only is it going to run over that heatsink, which if we bring it closer, you can see is vented in line with the venting of the PlayStation, but also we'll go in, introduce into that fan and then out the top as before. But of course, now we've got a new factor, of course. We have those fans there. So now we've got air being drawn through the front over the Sabrent heatsink there and then there's this extra air here so we're looking at ambient temperature and we're looking at the SSD controller temperature that's going to be taken directly from the SSD itself and we're going to compare them so again that's our test that's what we're looking at we're going to go through all of the tests together heavy read heavy write Far Cry 6 extended play and Demon Souls extended play and then we're going to go through the results together so let's crack on and have a look at the testing Okay, so test one was utilizing a large area of write activity. This was writing 300 gig of data from the internal PS5 SSD over to that of the uh, expansion SSD. Now, what's really interesting here is we look at the original PlayStation 5 uh, plate in turn with that M2 cover, we can see that it, after the initial boot at 32 degrees there on the graph, the SSD controller got as high as 45 degrees. Now, in terms of ambient temperature, things were a lot better. It started at 20.2 uh, 20 degrees and only went as high by the end of this stage of the testing to 20.8, just an increase of 0 0.6 degrees, which is nothing really. Now, if we have a look at the um, un if we look at the Sabrent covered one inside the D brand, we can see a slightly different story. It started hotter at 21.9 degrees in, in the ambient temperature and ended at 22.4. So again, an increase, but only slightly less, but still ending at a higher temperature. But the SSD controller is where it really got interesting, booting at just 20 degrees and maintained in that temperature thanks to the wider surface area of the Sabrent heatsink. During the heavy right, it got to its highest point at just 28 degrees, which was lower than the ambient, uh, the uh, controller temperature of the previous setup there. So again, lovely numbers and definitely indicating a very good start for the Sabrent D-Brand combo there. Next up, we did a gameplay test using Far Cry 6. Now the ambient temperature was once again starting very differently between the two, with the original plate and M2 cover starting hotter at 21.6 degrees and ending by the end of this test at a little over 24 degrees, an increase of 2.4 degrees during gameplay. Now the D brand plates um, utilizing the Sabrent on the other hand, these that was starting at 19.8 degrees, notably lower and ending at 24.9, an increase though of much a larger 5.1 degrees, meaning 
that throughout the ambient temperature there was definitely a kind of mid-level temperature that was to be expected. So although the Dbrand and Sabrent combo there started at lower temperature, it actually ended up ending at a larger temperature with a larger increase overall, likely down to that larger heat sink there gathering more heat over time and definitely being a much faster activity than the five to six minutes it took for the heavy right in the previous test and when we look at the controller temperature we can see the complete inversion of that the controller temperature on the ps5 original combo there with the cover fire cry 6 peaked at 43 degrees whereas with the sabrent and D brand cover case there, the controller only got as high as 32. So once again, an advantage for each party there in either side of the tests. Now, when we did our Demon Souls test, things were a little different. We saw that on the original plates and M2 cover, it started at 22.8 degrees, ending by the end of this test session at 26.6 degrees, an increase of 3.8 degrees of the ambient temperature in the original there. At the top right there, we can see that the uh, Demon Souls test with the Sabrent D brand combo there was starting at 20.3 degrees and ending at 22.9 degrees. So again, a smaller increase this time around and overall being less than that of the original plate combo. Now that could have been um, a resi residual heat from the previous test because even though we did a 15 minute cooldown, the Sabrent heat sink is significantly larger and I do think that may have led to dissipation of heat being a little harder there in the downtime moments. However, if we look at the controller temperature there in both instances, once again, we see that during the Demon Souls test on the original combo set up there with the original plates, the controller peaked at 48 degrees, whereas in the Sabrent D brand combo there, it only went as high as 33, notably lower and still maintaining only one degree of increase over the Fire Cry 6 uh, testing there. So again, we're starting to see a little bit more parity and a little bit more indication of the general flowing temperature of both of these systems throughout these tests. Let's move on to the final testing now. Now this final test was actually something of an anomaly. Now, in the heavy right activity with the original setup there uh, of the original covers and M2 cover plate, we can see the controller peaked quite a high 51 degrees, still operational temperature, and the ambient temperature went from 20.8 uh, 20 degrees to 24.3 degrees, an increase of 3.5. But where the discrepancy lied was when we were looking at the Sabrent and D-Brand combo for two reasons. First and foremost, we can see that it started at a much, much lower 18.5 degrees and peaked at just 20.9 degrees overall, significantly and noticeably lower than that of the original setup. We can also see that the controller there went to 38 degrees, note, you know, almost 12 to 13 degrees less than the original plates and cover combo. But the reason I say it's a discrepancy, and you can see on the chart there, I've included the remainder of that power down line was that halfway through the testing of this heavy read activity, the PlayStation 5's fans ramped up as if to compensate for a larger heat generation or it had noticed something wrong with the airflow. And as you can see on the orange bar there on the temperature of the controller on the Sabrent D brand combo, that it had to have all of that cool down afterwards. So although it did lower the temperature, it has to be highlighted that the fans did kick in. So let's talk about what we've seen when it comes to utilizing these devices, either with the original cover there or the dark plate. It also comes down to whether you're going to utilize a heat synced SSD with that M2 cover plate or you're going to be utilizing uh, the Sabrent cover there where we're using a fire cuda there without the heat sink. Now, the important thing here to bear in mind is, of course, they could not start all of these tests at exactly the same temperature, different times of day, a diff different ambient temperature from one day to the last. So once again, we were looking at the main difference between the beginning and the end. And in that score, if we look at just the ambient airflow, not factoring in the SSD yet, it's worth highlighting that it was pretty much a draw. Because in two cases, in the um, original um, heavy right activity there, the temperature rose just 0.1 of a degree less utilizing the Sabrent heatsink there. So it was such a small margin there that it wasn't a big deal. If we went into when playing Far Cry 6, in Far Cry 6, the cover plate here 
did raise the temperature of the lease, just 2.4 degrees, with the Sabrent one raising 5.1 degrees. However, the Sabrent and Seagate setup here, without the cover plate, started at a notably lower temperature. And that was kind of a theme that carried on throughout all of the different tests. Carrying on with the ambient temperature into Far Cry 6, we saw that the raise in temperature was greater there on the cover plate version there at 3.8 versus 2.6 and then finally on the heavy right temperatures again a little bit more towards that of the Sabrent and Seagate setup there at 2.4 degrees increase and 3.4 degrees increase there with the cover so overall although I always try my hardest not to look at the beginning temperature we know that these systems and these devices do have a base level of temperature use which even if one starts lower than the other they both have to kind of have a base level temperature to start with. So the ambient temperature seemingly did seem better with the Sabrent setup in that display, but not a million, million, million miles. And indeed, in the last test, we did notice that the fan of the PS5 erred up just the tiniest bit more there, which I think created potentially an irregularity there in terms of the temperature difference between them and the increased change. Now, if we focus on the SSD controller temperature utilizing the graphs that we mentioned and showed earlier on the screen we can see that in the case of all the tests the ssd's controller that's the brain to the ssd was significantly lower in terms of its temperature in the terms of heat generated um, ultimately the heat that it was able to dissipate onto the um, um, to heat sink so we can free it into the air and keep that process flowing as much and as effectively and efficiently as possible has to be said that the Sabrent and Firecuda setup was better overall in this setup. Now, how much this fan played into that is negligible. We've already looked at PS5 design heat sinks before, and we know they're better than regular heat sinks. We already know, looking at other videos, that utilizing this little panel here is pretty negative overall. If you're gonna use an SSD, definitely use a heat sink and not this panel, okay? Because I do think with all the evidence I've been going through so far indicates that that panel does more harm than good in terms of creating a large heat source with very little grooves or airflow channeling to allow the heat to be dissipated efficiently. But the SSD controller in every one of these tests generated note of 10 to in some cases even 15, 17 degrees of difference with a lower temperature rating uh, reading on the Sabrent heatsink there overall. And although maybe the tiniest bit of it was thanks to that extra fan allowing heat to be dissipated, the ambient air temperature would indicate that that was still quite a small amount. Though overall, we've just got to look at the evidence and say that if it comes to installing a, a Seagate Fire Cuda with its own EK heatsink under the M2 cover using the original panels, it will not dissipate heat based on these microcosm tests that we've been doing. It will not dissipate heat or allow the temperatures to be as low as the same Firecuda SSD without its heating, but using the Sabrent PS5 designed one. Overall, for me, that did indicate, with or without the D brand casing there, that it did a better job overall. But again, this is a microcosm test. It is not indicative of days, weeks, months, or even years of utility. However, all the evidence points to these being better overall. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much. If you have enjoyed this video, chuck me a like. It genuinely helps the channel and it allows me to know what subjects you want me to cover and enjoy the most. Click subscribe to stay abreast of all of the further tests on this. I'm probably not going to touch on the subject of the D brand now for a while, simply because with the D brand here, I think we've pushed this as far as we can in terms of temperature. And maybe as further innovations come out, or unless you've got a suggestion, I'm going to retire this subject for a little while i've already covered it in three different videos other than that thank you so much for watching click uh, sub uh subscribe to stay abreast and there is the free advice section over on nas compares but otherwise thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time